Welcome to the 2021 Florida Historical Society Virtual Annual Meeting and Symposium. I'm Ben Brookmarkle, Executive Director of the Florida Historical Society, and I'm here with our president, Emily Liska, our incoming president, Saki O'Sullivan, and our recording secretary, Casey Smith. And we'll start our membership meeting in just a moment, but first I wanna give you a quick welcome to this virtual conference. Last year, the Florida Historical Society started presenting two conferences a year, our annual meeting and symposium in October held on the campus of the University of Central Florida in conjunction with the Gerald H. Schaffner Lecture on Florida History and Culture. And then we have our Florida Historical Society Public History Forum in May, which is at a different Florida city, in a different Florida city uh, each year. That was the plan at least, but COVID-19 and its variants had some other plans. So uh, last year, our 2020 annual meeting and symposium was virtual and as was our May public history forum. And we're virtual again this year for our annual meeting and symposium, but it's gonna be a great event. We have both accomplished historians and young up and coming scholars doing presentations and the sessions that you're going to enjoy at this conference are Indigenous Florida, Queer History and Precarious Memory, and Difficult History, Preserving the Past and Protecting the Future. And as I say, it's, it's a lot of great topics, uh, both well-known historians, mid-career historians, and uh, students, graduate students in public history. So it should be a fascinating conference. And again, it's being presented in conjunction with the Gerald H. Schaffner Lecture on Florida History and Culture. That part of this conference is a hybrid event. And if you haven't yet registered, you can go in person. Uh, it is masked and socially distanced at the University of Central Florida, or you can enjoy it as you can the rest of this conference virtually. Uh, either way, you can register for the Schaffner Lecture at myfloridahistory.org. First, though, is the annual Florida Historical Society membership meeting, which is always a part of this conference, and that's led by our president, Emily Liska. Thank you, Ben. I'm going to call the meeting to order. The annual meeting of the Florida Historical Society will please come to order. Uh, welcome to you, the members. And frankly, we've missed seeing you as Ben said face to face. However, I have to be truthful. It's been both rewarding and an enlightening adventure to enjoy your continued participation virtually. Thank you, the members, for joining us for the Florida Historical Society annual meeting. We deeply appreciate your membership, your interest, and also your support. Thank you also for the opportunity these past years to serve as president of Florida's oldest cultural organization. Please know you are led by uniquely qualified and highly dedicated board of directors. During the past 20 months, board work continued uninterrupted at near 100% participation at all times and typically in virtual format. My heartfelt gratitude not only extends to the board, but also to the FHS staff. They functioned in stellar fashion during the difficult pandemic months. Thank you, Ben, for your leadership, and thank you to Ben and the board for a remarkably successful program year and financial year. I will not pretend these many months were without difficulty. Nonprofits everywhere scrambled for dollars but the real losses were far more profound. The extended FHS family lost dear members. They are not forgotten. It is both a point of pride and an opportunity that the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund has included the FHS in a special funding initiative. For every dollar you donate to the Florida Historical Society in November and in December, up to $500, the fund will match your contribution dollar for dollar. I ask you please to participate. Finally, one more recognition for you, the members. Always remember, you are the Florida Historical Society. Thank you for being with us at the annual meeting today. What we have next are two items of official business to report. Approval of the re revised FHS bylaws and approval of the proposed FHS board members. 
So let me start with, of course, the bylaws. It was Sunday, September 26, when a copy of the revised FHS bylaws were electronically mailed to the membership uh, with a request to either accept or reject the document via your email vote by noon on Monday, October the 4th. Uh, I will say several members presented questions or requests for, for clarification, which were addressed by our executive director. The response to the email was solid, very good. Uh, and right now I'm going to ask the recording secretary, Casey Smith, to officially report and document the membership vote. Thank you, Emily. I'm pleased to say that 68 FHS members responded to the request uh, to vote for the bylaws, 67 voted to accept them uh, as presented, and one member uh, said no, not to accept them. Thank you, Casey. Uh, I'm going to ask you to hold on for a minute, and again, I will repeat our next order of business, our, our list. On Thursday, September 30th, a copy of the proposed list of FHS Board of Directors was electronically mailed to the membership with a request to reject or accept the list via an email vote by noon on Monday, October the 4th. Again, the response was very good. Recording Secretary Casey Smith will officially report and document the vote. Thank you, Emily. I'm pleased to report that 58 members responded 57 of whom said yes to accept the uh, proposed list of uh, FHS Board of Directors, and there was one abstention. Thank you, KC. Uh, now it's time in the annual meeting for our Executive Director's Report, and I introduce you, introduce you to our Executive Director, Ben Brokemarkle. Ben? Thanks, Emily. Uh, I'm very happy to report that the Florida Historical Society is in very good financial health, uh, and that is largely due to our successful grants that we receive from various entities. And I want to thank our CFO, Deanna Runyon, for her assistance in preparing our successful grant applications. Uh, for example, uh, the Florida Department of State Division of Historical Resources small matching grant that we receive uh, is, is very significant. Uh, we are usually at the top of the list, uh, near the top of the list. In fact, uh, out of the, the dozens of applicants, uh, right, right around 60 for the current financial year, we were the top ranking grant application. For the, the grant that uh, was just submitted and scored, uh, we were 1.4 points out of 100 away from the top spot. So we're always very near the top. And that's very important funding for us from the state. We also uh, get a, a, a grant uh, and score well for the Division of Cultural Affairs grant, which is now the Division of Arts and Culture. We're eligible for $90,000 for that grant, but it's always funded by the legislature at less than the full amount that is recommended to them. So uh, it, it's very important for not only the Florida Historical Society, but for cultural organizations throughout the state for the legislature to uh, approve those grants in full. So I would encourage you to encourage your legislatures to uh, pass those grants at the full recommended amount. It, it's a tiny minuscule portion of the overall state budget, but means a lot to cultural organizations throughout the state and the Florida Historical Society. We also get funding from private foundations, most notably the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund and also the historic Rossiter House Foundation. Uh, we also are successful, as, as Emily mentioned, due to our very active board of directors who is very supportive of our efforts. And I want to thank each and every one of them for their ongoing support of the Florida Historical Society. And of course, our membership. And uh, you are why we are here doing what we do. And as Emily mentioned, thanks to the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund, if you make an online donation to the Florida Historical Society in the months of November and December, the amount that you donate up to $500 will be matched, which is an amazing thing. So if you donate $500, that's a $1,000 donation. Or if you donate $100, the Florida Historical Society will receive $200. So as you plan your end of year giving, 
I strongly recommend and hope that you will consider the Florida Historical Society at the $500 level and go to our website at myfloridahistory.org to make that online donation during the months of November and December. So you as a member are extremely important to this organization. Uh, so what does your FHS membership support? Well, to start with, our Florida Historical Quarterly, our academic journal, is celebrating its 100th volume of four issues each this year. It's an academic journal that is highly regarded and uh, is our primary benefit of, of membership, actually. Also, one of our most successful educational outreach programs is the Florida Historical Society's radio magazine and television show. For nearly 13 years now, we've had Florida Frontiers, the weekly radio magazine of the Florida Historical Society, uh, airing on NPR affiliates throughout the state. I'm the producer and host of that program, along with Connie Lester, who's also editor of the Florida Historical Quarterly as a primary contributor, as well as Holly Baker, who is our public history coordinator and archivist here at the Library of Florida History. Also, John White is our director of media production and he edits the program. The radio program has been going strong. COVID did not slow us down, uh, thanks to Zoom. <laughs> and uh, you know we, we missed uh, going out all over the state doing interviews, but Zoom allowed us to do interviews that sounded a whole lot better than, than just being on the phone. So we, uh, the production of our radio program was uninterrupted uh, from throughout the past year. Uh, uh, the radio program uh, has three different topics each each episode. So uh, you know it can go from something on the Seminole War to something on women's suffrage to something on an early 20th century building that's endangered to a prehistoric artifact. So there's lots of different topics. It's a period of history you're not interested in. Keep listening for five or 10 minutes and there will be something you're interested in. Uh, our other very successful outreach media program, of course, is Florida Frontiers Television, which airs on PBS affiliates throughout the state and some educational cable channels as well. Those programs are on a single topic. They focus on a single issue or topic for public television. And uh, there were challenges with COVID. Again, Zoom helped us out a bit there. But for that uh, few weeks in, in the, the summer where we all thought it was over, we were able to go back out and, and do some interesting programming. And even during COVID, we, we got creative with our programming. For example, we did an episode of Florida Frontiers Television called Songs of the Sunshine State, where we collaborated with the Jacksonville Children's Chorus and uh, their adult group, Voices of Jacksonville, as well as uh, contemporary singer-songwriter Chris Call, and used historic recordings by Zora Neale Hurston and Gamble Rogers and others, and put together a program of music that looked at Florida history and culture and told the story that way. So it turned out to be a very successful program, and we were uh, happy with that. And everybody was masked and distance, and most of the performances were outside. And it was a very successful program. And again, when we got out and about a little bit, we were able to shoot a documentary episode on the Jimenez Facio House in St. Augustine. And also uh, we did all of the, the shooting for upcoming episodes that you'll be seeing before the end of the year on the shrimping industry in Florida, which is actually an episode we were working on for years before COVID even came, but that will finally come to fruition. And also an episode on the courageous journalist, Mabel Norris Reese. So those, those episodes are upcoming, and we're back out on the field with Florida Frontiers television being safe uh, the way that we are, are shooting the program. And both our radio program and our television program are archived online every episode uh, at myfloridahistory.org, so you can find them there. Uh, we also operate the Florida Historical Society Press. We've been publishing books since the 1920s, but have been publishing uh, more in earnest over the past several decades. And one of the most exciting books that we've published since we last met in October is called An Englishman in the Seminole War, a memoir based upon the letters of John Bemrose. And John Bemrose was an Englishman, an English boy, really, uh, who came here in 1831 as an unaccompanied 16 year old. He, he basically ran away from home and came to the United States. And he joined the army, was here in Florida, 
uh, as a uh, it, during the Seminole War as, as a uh, medic, basically. And he wrote about his experiences and offers, uh, you can find some really fascinating descriptions of St. Augustine and Micanopy and people that whose names we know uh, as associated with the, the Seminole War era, but he really brings them to life and talks about their characteristics. And it's a fascinating book. Another book that's been published since we last met in, at an annual meeting uh, is Mastodons, Mansions, and Antebellum Ghosts, a sketchbook of voices rising up from Florida's red hills. And that takes us to the, the center of Florida's panhandle in the, the red hills of Florida, and uh, just really has a lot of interesting stories and history and folklore from that era, or that area rather, of Florida. Uh, we have some really exciting upcoming books being published by Florida Historical Society Press before the end of the year. One book is on Wayne Mixon, who was governor of Florida for three days in January of, of 1987, but uh, he has a, a really fascinating story. And a book on A.S.J. Allen, who was a Black reverend in Alachua County, who was killed by his white neighbor in 1904. And, it, and it's written by his great-grandson and is a important and, and fascinating story. And we have other books in line too. So the, the FHS press is, is going strong. Our social media presence, especially on Facebook, is uh, continues to expand greatly. Uh, rec a recent post on the Cross Florida Barge Canal reached nearly one and a half million people, uh, which is a, is a record for us, uh, with 1,200 comments and nearly 4,000 reactions. Another recent post on the Walt Disney World 50th anniversary reached more than 168,000 with 101 comments and 658 reactions, uh, nearly 1,000 shares of that post. And while those two stand out as, as you know, kind of record-breaking for us, uh, many of our, po our posts on Facebook reach in the tens of thousands. That's not unusual now. Uh, for our post to reach tens of thousands of people. So uh, it's a great way, to, another way uh, to get out the word about Florida history and culture, which is what we're all about here. Our Library of Florida History, where I am now, as you know, it, we have thousands of rare and out of print books. We have maps upstairs dating back to the 1500s. We have thousands, about 20,000 uh, postcards. We have historic photographs, lots of private papers and documents that are here for researchers. And with safety protocols in place, we are open for researchers by appointment. So if you have Florida history research to do, please contact our archivist, Holly Baker, and we will set up an appointment for you to come do research here. We also operate the historic Rossiter House Museum and Gardens, and we have a great symbiotic relationship with the Rossiter House Museum. Uh, it is back open for masked and socially distanced tours after an extensive restoration uh, over the summer. It was a major restoration in both the Raish House, which is part of the property, and the historic Rossiter House, and we're welcoming back for masked tours. Also, as I mentioned at the beginning, an important part of what we do are our two conferences now annually. The, uh, this meeting, the annual meeting and symposium in October, uh, which uh, usually will be at the University of Central Florida uh, in conjunction with the Gerald H. Schaffner Lecture on Florida History and Culture. Uh, and uh, this event is primarily focused on academic paper presentations and, and uh, scholarly discussions. Uh, but since we last met, we also had our first uh, public history forum, our 2021 Florida Historical Society Public History Forum. And again, the plan is for our May forum to be in a different Florida city each year, but it was a virtual event because of COVID and its uh, variants. But we had some really fascinating presentations. We, we had a panel discussion on territorial Florida in 1821, Emancipation Day in Florida, the Florida land boom of the 1920s, 50 years of Walt Disney World, and of course, we had a presentation from Pulitzer Prize winning author Gilbert King. And if you missed any of that conference, that and our 2020 annual meeting and symposium are both accessible online uh, at myfloridahistory.org. That's one of the advantages to a virtual conference. Uh, we, we really miss seeing everybody, as, as Emily said, in person, but uh, we, we can archive them and they are archived online. So you can enjoy both of those events 
our last two conferences uh, online. Now, 2022, in May, we are planning to have our Florida Historical Society Public History Forum at the Hilton Conference Center in Gainesville. And it's my intent, if we have to pass out hazmat suits, we will be meeting in person in Gainesville. We have a, a lot of exciting things already in the works for that conference, including a presentation from Ann McCutcheon, who is the author of the new book, The Life She Wished to Live, about Marjorie Kinan Rawlings, who of course uh, lived near Gainesville at Cross Creek and, and a lot of other exciting things, taking advantage again of all of the great archives and, and museums and uh, things to enjoy in the Gainesville area, as well as roundtable discussions and, and presentations. So please mark your calendar for that May 19th through 21st in Gainesville. That is a brief summary of what we've been doing for the past year since we've seen you. COVID has kept us distance. We haven't been able to do as much uh, in-person outreach, but our, our media programs are uh, continue to uh, going strong, our publishing arms, uh, everything is continuing here at the Florida Historical Society. And it's possible from our membership. Your membership and your donations to the Florida Historical Society are essential to us. Just to reiterate, if you can, as you plan your end of year giving, please plan to give online to the Florida Historical Society. Up to $500 will be matched in its entirety if you make that donation during the months of November and December. And we want to thank you. And before I wrap, I want to do one more thing before I turn it back over to Emily. And that is on behalf of the Florida Historical Society Board of Directors, staff, uh, membership, uh, volunteers, everybody here. We want to particularly thank Emily. She has done almost double duty. She's been our president, uh, not only serving a regular term, but during the COVID crisis, it was determined that it would be better for her to stay as president. So she's, what, about six or seven months short now of serving a double term as president. So she's, she's really uh, answered the call and been a uh, uh, fantastic president to work with, and I want to thank her. And on behalf of everybody, uh, I wish I could do it in person, but I want to present her with this uh, award from the Florida Historical Society, which is an exemplary service award uh, for Emily Liska, FHS president, May 2018 to October 2021. And as soon as I see you in person, Emily, I will, uh, at the appropriate time, I'll give this to you in person, but I just wanted to do it here in public at our at our annual meeting uh, with you presiding as president at this annual membership meeting. So thank you for your service, Emily. Thank you, Ben. I, I've truly been honored to serve. I love this organization. Every single board member loves this organization. And uh, every time I get to meet with a member, I know that they do too. Thank you for what was an outstanding uh, annual report, uh, a summary of the activities. Uh, I, I'm certain our members are reassured uh, that activities have remained at a peak and thank you for your leadership in, in that endeavor. Uh, just so grateful uh, to, to continue the meeting. We do have uh, uh, something else on our order of business and the most important aspect, I think, at this point, and that is to introduce you to the uh, incoming president of the Florida Historical Society. Um, the leadership with this man is outstanding. Uh, his credentials uh, unmatched. And so it gives me great pleasure to introduce Morris uh, O'Sullivan, also known as to all of his friends and everyone who knows him, Saki O'Sullivan. And you can certainly uh, approach him with uh, that very friendly name. Saki, I turn the presidency over to you. With, with pleasure, with pleasure. Thank you, Emily. It is an honor to step into this position, especially after the extraordinary job that you have done for the last three and a half years during this really trying time. And I am especially impressed as Ben's report showed that while most cultural organizations are simply trying to survive, we have been thriving. The FHS has been doing extraordinary work, not only continuing many of its wonderful programs, but developing new ones. The Public History Forum, especially I think 
is going to be very important. And as Emily said earlier, the Florida Historical Society is an organization for everyone, for all Floridians and everyone interested in Florida, even for English teachers like me. So anyone should feel comfortable to come in and to join. And it is a period that has enormous promise. If we look at what Ben and his staff, Deanna Runyon, John White, and Holly Baker have achieved during the worst of times, we can only imagine how great our future is going to be when we move into the best of times. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the Florida Historical Society Saki is in for a great two years of leadership with you and Ben at the helm. Thank you so much. And an English teacher is welcomed with open arms in this day and age, I assure you. Uh, so it's, it's a pleasure. Uh, do I hear any other uh, business on our agenda today? Any business for anyone? If there is no further business, I want to thank KC, um, our stellar recording secretary, thank you. I wanna thank Ben, uh, the incomparable executive director. And I'm gonna use incomparable with you too. Thank you so much. Uh, what, a, uh, what a wonderful uh, treat our organization has in store with your leadership, Saki. And with those comments, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Emily. And for those watching, please plan to tune into the rest of the conference. And uh, as we said, those, those uh, panels include Indigenous Florida, Queer History and Precarious Memory, Difficult History, Preserving the Past and Protecting the Future, and this evening, the Gerald H. Schaffner Lecture on Florida History and Culture. And for more information, go to our website at myfloridahistory.org.